nothing to the extent of you know Baltimore Comic Con with panel dealer rooms all that kind of stuff so just very small local Baltimore places um, so I just was like hey can I help out I, I want to help so I started out doing more of like social media stuff helping with the logo because like you mentioned I'm a graphic designer too so I was able to help out with some of those little things um, you know that were needed and um, then eventually um, John came on and uh, you know he also was kind of like hey can I help out too so um, between the three of us we try to help organize the shows um, when people get in touch and want table space you know we take all that information and you know post about where we're going to be and um, all kinds of stuff so yeah I just kind of came into it as um, you know a, a friend of a friend and just wanting to help out so and here we are. <laughs> and, and how, how long is it? So we've, we're coming up on show number 16 in this December. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so if you're more into comics buttons, uh, small, you know, very mini bar conventions, we take over a bar on a Saturday afternoon and uh, I'll get together, sell our books, and hang out. And the 16th one is this December, so it's been yep. three, four years now? Yeah, you know, I was trying to think of the exact year off the top of my head, and I think it was 2013. It might have been even 2012, but I think it was 2013 when the first one was, because I think the first one I did was 2014, because it was there was a December show that got moved to January because of snow. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, what year was it? Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's been going on um, for a couple years now, and in addition to the shows that we do, um, at uh, usually the wind-up space is like kind of our home base. Uh, we also host events like Drink and Draw. So, um, you know, since we've kind of made this connection with the, the owner at wind-up space, uh, every um, first and third Wednesday of the month, we have Drink and Draw. We've expanded it to be Drink and Draw and Draft, so it's not just limited to artists. Writers can come along too, which, yeah, everyone up here is a writer, right? But me, yeah. So, yeah, these guys can come. We were like, sure, whatever. Storytellers. <laughs> yes, storytellers. So, yeah, so, you know, we don't, it's definitely not a, um, you know, you have to have drawing skills to attend. It's really just a, here's a good excuse to come hang out with your peers, even if you don't have something you're working on. We used to give prompts, actually, to people. We used to say, here's, you know, Give you a number one through a hundred, and um, we had a prompt associated with that number. And then very quickly we realized almost everyone who was coming had projects they were working on, and really were just looking for an excuse to get it done, to go to a place where they could be around like-minded people who were going to be like, well, here's what I'm working on, here's what I'm working on. So there are some times where we are all very focused on our projects, and we're all just kind of you know, silently working next to each other, and then other times where it's a great distraction. You get to say, well, what are you working on? I want to hear all about that, and I'm, I'm just here to hang out. So, you know, you get a mixed bag. Yeah, so we're going to be talking a lot about Be More Into Comics, uh, because we think more people should be a part of it, but this panel is about creative communities in general. So, uh, Dave, can you tell us about some other creative communities and uh, that you've, you found yourself a part of? No? What about Kickstarter? Do you feel like you made connections on Kickstarter? Uh, I mean, everything is kind of, uh, I feel like it's kind of watered down with social media and things like that. Whereas, in like, uh, uh, like, as far as Kickstarter goes, uh, the most amount of people that I've ever met is basically from online, but then as election cycles, as disasters, as other like political events begin to filter in through most of our feeds, like I find that a lot of that community begins to like, fracture and splinter and lose focus. So um, uh, the best creative community that I came to is Be More just because I can meet you all, like I can see you all, I can sit down and like we can not pay attention to catastrophes <laughs> on on the on the the minute span, the sixty second span, um, and that really focuses me and recharges me. Um, of course, you know, knowing people within the industry always helps, and like they of course have their own niche, their own like mini, uh, not even mini, but they have their own creative communities and studios like. 
uh, out in Portland, Layla yeah, is yeah, part of Helioscope, yeah, right? Yeah. And like, so everybody in Helioscope is super cool, and you get to talk with them and hang out with them and tour their thing. And it's like, it's just like be more. It's like you get to talk to people, you get to meet new people, talking about comics, making comics, writing, reading. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? And then we become friends, right? Yeah. And so um, I don't know, man. Like in this. As the years pass, like, and I'm going to keep blaming social media, but like, it's really fracturing people. And like, we're losing sight on creativity and community. I feel like a lot of us need that barrier. We need that barrier of not being around a constant feed of misery for 24 hours a day. And when I, when we take breaks from, from friends and family and things like that, and we come back with a new sense, a new idea, new, just recharged, you know, that community becomes even stronger. And uh, while I guess it's good to like, you know, help with events and what we're doing and where we're going and, and, and to notify people, at the same time, I think a lot of our hard work and our camaraderie gets drowned out. So, uh, no. <laughs> the answer is no, and uh, Be More in the Comics is pretty much that. I mean, I know, I know, I know a few filmmakers, and again, it's, it's just like scattered, you know? Sure. And we all come together through storytelling. Mm -hmm. And so I think the greatest creative community is just the idea of storytelling. Because when you find out that people make stories, create stories, you're automatically drawn, like, well, what kind of stories do you tell, or do you yeah. like to tell? Yeah. And there's definitely like a lot of, I think, um, there's a lot of crossover, you know, between Everything. these different storytelling methods. Um, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin, I know you... Got a little dark there, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see a misery show. so well. I will. <laughs> Kevin, you started very early in web webcomics community. Can you talk a little bit about, like, different communities that you found yourself a part of? And Spider Forest, and you were on Keen Spot for a while? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers Keen Space, which is like Comic Genesis now, I think. It changed names or something. Like Sega Genesis? <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. Um, so uh, I put my first web comics online with Keen Space back when you had to like apply and be like, this is my story, like get approved and stuff like that. Um, so that was when I was graduating high school and starting college, so that was kind of, um, that was a you know fun time, just me j trying to figure out stuff, and I definitely met people at that time who were putting out web comics when web comics web comics weren't as um, well known as they are now. Because now there's sites like Line Webtoon, Topastic, you can find stuff more easily. So Keenspace was kind of like an originator of that uh, concept. Um, so there's definitely people that I met back then who read Ultra Girl back then when I was 18 and put in up just like pencil sketches with like Paint Shop Pro, like didn't know what I was doing, who saw something in it then and, and have graciously stayed with me till now, um, bringing the comic back and uh, approaching it more professionally, I, I always say. Um, so yeah, so that community really, you know, helped me make connections and now, um, the current iteration of Alter Girl that I do as a webcomic, I'm part of the Spider Forest Webcomics Collective, um, which is, you know, similar concept. Everybody's, um, the connection is everybody does a webcomic. So there's that community specifically. They have all kinds of different titles. You can find, you know, I do all ages, young adult stuff for the most part, but you can find, you know, mature stuff there, you know, more gory, horror, um, uh, fantasy, sci-fi, and I'm, I'm kind of the, the one in the manga category. They don't have a ton of shoujo manga at the moment, but they're getting some more. And we take applications, too, so there's always new titles coming in, and, and that's really been growing, too. So, um, And we table at SPX. That was last weekend. Um, the Spider Forest crew gets a table there, and so everybody can bring their books and showcase, which is really great because, you know, maybe you come over, you know, something catches your eye, but then there's all kinds of different genres there that you can kind of explore. So by having that connection with, you know, a wide variety of storytellers, like we're saying, you know, there's something there for everybody, and we all can uh, appreciate the different uh, titles there. I forgot. We all play Dungeons and Dragons. 
Yeah, that's another, that's another yeah. community thing, yeah. So yeah. yeah, we were talking about Drink and Draw. Parker also runs a Drinking and Dragons group. So this um, past Wednesday, right? You don't have to drink. Yeah, you don't have to you drink. Have it's to just at a bar. And there may or may so, not be dragons. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so it's just got a drink in it since we do it at a bar. So yeah, we had a big crossover event on Wednesday, which was Drink and Draw and Drinking and Dragons. And we called it the Night of Too Many Ds. <laughs> so yeah, it, was yeah. it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, uh, and um, if you have any questions about that, we should definitely talk after the panel because I had a lot of fun uh, helping coordinate that group. Uh, Jordan, can you tell us about how you found? Uh, I mean, you, so you're members of you're a member of more into comics and <laughs> plethora of witches. Um, <laughs> so you're a member of, of be more into comics. You're a member of the Artway Alliance. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, about how you found yourself sort of connected to these two groups? Uh, what was the other one? Art 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 Art. Okay. <laughs> um, so at the very first show I ever did, which was at, what was the name of that Smudge. place? Smudge. Yeah, Smudge Expo. It's a, it's Smudge Expo, which no longer exists, and a building that no longer exists uh -huh. uh, <laughs> in Virginia. Um, I was sitting directly across from Cat. Uh, and it was the first thing I ever, I just had one comic, I don't even know why I was there. It was probably not a good decision, uh, but people bought it anyways, uh, which was nice. Um, but uh, I didn't know what I was doing, my mom was there. <laughs> and um, Kata, I think that's the reason Kata came over, because she and my sister went to school together and she recognized my mom. Uh, so she came up and started talking to me just about comics and she mentioned the was telling me that I should come and do some of those shows and check that out. Um, and then also at that show I met Emily Gillis, who is uh, one of the heads of Square City Comics, which is a collective in D.C. And they're here too, tabling. They're also here, and she told me the same thing. She was like, oh, you should come to D.C. and do like, you know, Square City stuff. Um, and then at the same show I met uh, Eric Suggs, Jr., who was the head of Artway Alliance, which is a group uh, that does art outreach in the DC, but basically all DC, Maryland, Virginia. Um, so they do a lot of like workshops and working with kids and people of all ages, just teaching people about uh, sequential art and manga and animation um, and all that stuff. So I kind of like lucked out in that sense that like all these people were there and like, come here and do this and be with us. Um, so uh, I think maybe whatever the next Be More show, like I came out to just see what that was. Uh, and I got hooked into there, and then I did a couple of the meetings in Square City. Square City meets like once a month in like DuPont Circle uh, in DC, so I did that. And then Eric started bringing me out to do the Artway stuff. Um, and that's how I do a lot of my shows now, is that Artway, the deal that they make with conventions is they will get table space for doing workshops and panels. Uh, so he just gets free tables at like Awesome Con and uh, uh, they did like Escape Velocity, which was a sci-fi convention. Uh, they do the Baltimore Book Festival this weekend, so like he's just like come on out and do a thing and like sell stuff. Uh, so it's a nice way to kind of like you know give back, but also like I, I get something too in that. Um, so yeah, I mean it was it was just kind of luck that I was able to meet all these people who were doing all kinds of cool stuff, and they just kind of pulled me along with them. So uh, like I mentioned a little earlier. Um, Joining up with Be More Into Comics and, and finding my way sort of into those shows and the, the Drink and Draw and Draft events um, has really uh, helped me develop uh, from not even really knowing what a comic script was into uh, you know running my website and having having a bunch of printed books. So can you, can all of the panelists can you uh, can we talk about how you've changed since you first joined up uh, with Be More uh, or or a different artistic community creative community? <laughs> um, I think I'm, I think I've grown a lot. I mean, I think the best thing about all of these different communities is that sometimes being creative can be isolating, and that you know you're trying to do all this stuff and work on these things, but you can't really do that and socialize and hang out and you know be a person. I guess in some sense, uh, when you're really focused in trying to do you know the projects that you're working on, so, especially you're working even part time. Yeah, and, um, um, so. I think, A, just being around other creative people kind of gives you that energy uh, that you need sometimes when you don't really feel like doing anything, but you know, you go out to a drink and draw or something like that, and you hear and see all the cool things that people are working on, and you're like, I want to do that, you know, 
I got I got something that I need to go home and work on. So uh, that kind of charges you up. But also being around, you know, people like Monica, who's like super inspiring, like all the stuff. Like when I started doing the Be More stuff, like you know, I would see Monica, and like you know, she had all these books and she'd been doing this for so long. And then like you talk to her, and she's like, how many shows was she doing? <laughs> you know, yeah. she was doing like a crazy amount of shows, and like. She would go to like Thought Bubble and like the UK, and I was like, I'm gonna do that. Like that sounds awesome. Um, but you could also just see like how focused she is and like how hardworking she is and kind of what you need. Uh, so I'd always look at her and look at Kata and kind of be like, I need to, I need to get there. You know what I mean? Because like those people are really like putting in the kind of work that you need to do to be successful. Um, and then also just having people that you can talk to, like me and Dave meet up sometimes and just get wings and talk and bitch about stuff. And like, <laughs> you know, I'll tell him what I'm working on, he'll tell me what he's working on, and we kind of like share ideas and like are able to kind of like, you know, kind of work some of that stuff out in your brain that, you know, it, 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 it's sitting there and you're, you're thinking about it, but, you know, sometimes you're like, that's dumb. Like that's not good. that's not a good idea. I mean, you say it to somebody else, I'm like, oh, that's great. I'm like, yeah, that is dumb. I'm like, I'm really good to know. Um, so you know, people have been very helpful with resources. You know, like uh, I didn't know where to print stuff, and people had all kinds of opinions about that, like Kickstarter stuff. Like Dave knows a lot about it. Mike Riley, another member, knows a lot about it. Uh, so being able to go to those people and, and get that kind of information, because uh, you know, you can go on the internet and you know, people say stuff, but you know, I don't know if people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I know people in your life. Uh, so it's always nice when somebody that you know and trust says like, oh yeah, like, I use this service and like they're great, you know, or like I, I do this or like, you know, if I wanted to get a banner, like Kata has a really nice banner, so I'd be like, Kata, what, where'd you get your banner? Then? How'd you do that? And she'd be like, oh yeah, you know, XYZ. Um, so I, I think that, you know, without being part of all these groups, I don't know if I would be where I am now just because uh, you know, you're kind of lost a little bit out there when you're just kind of like stumbling around trying to figure stuff out. But um, you know, it's also nice to just kind of have like a like a makeshift family of people that you can go to and trust, and they kind of have your back and support you. Um, you know, whether or not you feel up to it at the moment, you know, you always know that you have people who are going to be like, yeah, you know, you can do that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback off of that because. Um, I feel like you've said a lot of the things that I was thinking about. Just, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just feeling like you start out by saying sometimes it can be isolating. And so I feel like what I want to do, like, you know, when I see you, like that first show, I was like, let me go over and be like, you can do this. Yeah. Like, it's doable. And keep going and just kind of be like a personal cheerleader for people and to be that resource. And also just like to take whatever kind of experience I have because I'm still learning, I'm still growing, I'm still figuring stuff out, but to take what I know and pass that on to help, you know, lift up everybody because everybody has a space in comics. And so I just want to be, you know, um, part of the community where I can be like, we're all in this together, and it's not just, well, what can I get out of this, but what can I give to this community too? What can I put back into it to, you know, help my friends and be a resource? So, yeah, <coughs> that, yeah I like what you said, so I just wanted to add to that, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. So, I mean, tell us, tell us a little bit about where you were when you found me more, and then what have you noticed changing in your work or, or in your career or something? I, I mean, I think it's a lot, like, I mean, Jordan and Kata said the same thing. I, it's where I, different. Yeah, I, I mean, the where I was is like, I was still a retailer, yeah. right? So uh, I worked at Collector's Corner, I was the manager there, so I understood. That's how I met you, through Collector's yeah. Corner. Like, before even, like, Be More stuff, like, doing free comic book day at Collector's yeah. Corner, like, yeah. And, like, I care about comics a whole lot, probably a little bit too much. That's, it's bad for my life. But, um... Yeah, I was a retailer. I did. I had done one book. That was in like 2012, and I would say, and it was probably 2013 or 2014 when I did my first show too, because I think Mike Riley and I had collaborated on like the first issue of Commuters, and so that was either my second or third adventure into collaboration. Um, I had done another book called Control with a friend of mine, uh, Matt, and like 
I was like still learning how to collaborate and still like I had this business side of my mind already with comics, but I had like the creative aspect and, and, and yearning. And, um, and so I felt like I was expecting a little too much out of creative types as far as the point where, you know, if you're going to collaborate with me, like I need you to do X, Y, and Z by X, Y, and Z. And that's how I understand comics and that's how I want things because I've seen how sales decline, how customers decline, how number, you know, money, the end. Um, and as I progressed in with be more into comics and doing more shows, I've kind of loosened up with that, where it's like, I'm gonna go to this show and I'm already in the hole. And any money that I make will be fine. And so now I'm okay with that. But most of the time, yeah, like it, it this is very, very isolating. It is very especially part-time, and like you want this to be full-time. And so you're thinking, this is how I think, is that um, how much should I be doing every night after work? When do I stop and start? And, and how much is my output and my productivity? And like, am I gonna make it and is this worth it? And then I started thinking about like, how much I just care about comics and how I just would rather make comics as comics and be with my friends. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of ups and downs. And uh, I think I'm a different person from this community because I've seen so many people like succeed in so many different ways, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I'm a different person since 2012. Like, I started meditating, like I exercise more. Like, you know, we eat right to have a good child. Yeah, um, I did not have one of those. You know, like all, the, all, these things, all these things that are important, they influence your work. You saw the last yeah. season of Twin Peaks. That's the last season of Twin Peaks, yeah. <laughs> A different time. It is, and what a world to be able to find. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, so so much has changed and so, so many things are different. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, I mean, we're all, you know, hopefully growing on our own, but then it's it's interesting to see, because you know, you're talking about mellowing out a little bit uh, and, and sort of shifting sort of out of that retailer mindset, but I got to say that hearing from your experiences in the retail world and some of the expectations you have and your, your knowledge about printers and convention organizing and all that kind of stuff has been invaluable, you, you know, and, and this is true you know, for everyone at the table. I think, you know, it's more than the sum of its parts, right? Like, we, we all have different experiences. I mean, Kat had designed my logo and Jordan is an editor with me and uh, Dave turned me on to the best printer on the East Coast uh, and it's, um, it's been a fantastic blend, and uh, sort of. I think I think being part of the community is probably the best thing that I t can take out of all of this. Mm -hmm. Like I, I like finding people that kind of give a shit about me, <laughs> and I give a shit about. We give a shit about. Yeah, you. I and like that's a big deal to me. It is, it, because again, like as you all know, the things that you love and like have always been alienating. For you, and it's only within the last decade that things like this has blown up, right? Mm -hmm. um, nerd culture, as yeah. to say, and like we're now mainstream, but we didn't forget where we came from, and and it, even though that it's popular, it's still just as isolating, and you're still just as lonely. Yeah, well, because the act of creating, I, I think, is is isolating in itself. You know, the, the difference yeah. between consuming and creating can be a big gap sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So on, on that on that cheery thought. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Told you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Die. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dave, Dave just sent me his, his, uh, his pre brief for what he was going to say. And yeah, it was. Uh, uh, this isn't exactly what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Uh, so. One of the things that, that I've been noticing a lot about Be More, um, to, to use a, maybe a little bit of a trade aphorism, that is, is that it takes a village. Um, you know, I, the, the founder and creator, Monica Gallagher, she's, um, she's been put in a position where she's not able to put as much work in uh, to the community and even into her comics right now. And, and you know what, I gotta stop you right there, because she would be, John and I had to tell her, stop, weird taking care of this, so yeah, she would be, but we were like, take a break, we got it. 
Yeah. And, and so, um, so it absolutely like it takes takes a village, right? To to keep this thing going, to keep the drinking drums happening, to keep the shows happening, to um, you know put tabling and events together. Um, and so I think we've all put in a bit of work in be more, but especially you, Kevin. So I'm interested in hearing uh, about how you. Uh, how you balance sort of your personal work and making sure that you, you are getting the independent and, and isolated time that every creator needs to, to work and to create, and also continuing to foster the community and making sure that it is open and available to you folks. I don't know. I will let you know when I figure that out. <laughs> um, in general though, like balancing like, like work and life, I do, I, I've been full-time freelance for the last three years, so I'm still kind of figuring things out. Um, but I do try to keep office hours. Just like if I were going to an office nine to five, I'm here, I'm on the clock, I'm working, I'm responding to be more stuff, I'm responding to my own work projects, um, seeking things out, um, doing that in those office hours. And then when it's five o'clock, um, you know, turning that off and being like, well, now I'm here, I'm with my family, we're having dinner together, um, you know, I'm putting my son to bed. Uh, and then sometimes uh, I go right back to the computer and I um, keep working. And those are the, the, the tough times when I have deadlines, when I'm, I'm working into the night. But overall, I do try to just keep, keep a level head and keep a schedule of, you know, this is the time that is allotted for my community, for my work, for my professional, because I do treat Be More as a professional, you know, thing that, you know, it's not just a, you know, when I see it. Yeah, yeah, so I try to make sure that that is part of my dedicated time, but I also try to make sure that I have, you know, time for myself too. So, yeah, office hours. Jordan, do you Well, actually, so, uh, um, I'll ask you. I'll ask you. <laughs> um, uh, so I definitely want to save some time for questions at the end, but I, I think I saw some people were looking to ask a question now. So if you have questions, feel free to yeah pop up. Sure. Uh, so uh, one of the things Dave mentioned uh, that I think is so true is the reason why we're here at a convention is that um, meeting in person or having a community in person is so uh, much more valuable. Well, not much more valuable, but valuable in addition to the online community. Mm -hmm. Um, so you guys have a collective based out of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. um, what, if anything, from Baltimore, living in Maryland, um, has informed your work, any of your projects that you guys have worked on? Damn. Yeah, man. Man, like, I've always thought about that, and I don't know. I, I, well, you know, there's the Baltimore time travel scene. Did you? Did Mike? Mike, Mike did. Okay, some people, this was kind of at the beginning. I know there was a scene that, um, uh, one of another member who was in Baltimore and has since moved away that she put together um, that had a lot of artists and it was very much Baltimore influenced. So we are actually hoping that be more as a group that that is something that we can start up ourselves doing a zine collective book that you know hopefully we'll have at Comic Con next year. Mm -hmm. We can all get our act together. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I think I, I think basically uh, Baltimore is a working class city. Very much so, like we put in the work. And if anything, that has informed all of my work is that in order to succeed in whatever it is that I'm doing, you have to put the work in. And I don't think there's another, like, there are so many different cities, of course, across this great nation that could probably claim that. But if you look around here, like, you know that we work hard. We, we try to work, we try to do our best with what we have. And uh, sometimes it, it succeeds and sometimes it fails, but everyone seems to just keep going about it and keep plugging away. And that's that's how comics are, I think. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And uh No. I did. Uh, yourself, I know, I thought I did. I thought so. Um but I grew up like, you know, I was born in Baltimore and then of course I was like taken to a very rural place and like so if anything that it has influenced me from out there is that uh, just the weird, just the weird stuff about Maryland. And like, <laughs> there are some weird places here. Like, the closer you get to Appalachia, or like the closer you get to the Pennsylvania line, like a lot of those rural, 
towns are just strange. And I mean, and that's probably aping off of Lovecraft a little bit, maybe a little less racist. Um, I hope so. Um, and more into like the weird stuff and like like monsters and the darkness and the depression and the anxiety that comes from being again isolated in a place where you know you could be a weird kid that listens to punk rock or not goth music. I don't know. Uh, I was a punk rock guy, but anyway. Um, but yeah, growing up in a rural place where like most people like want to beat the crap out of you because you're a little different. Again, you know, like I was talking into the previous one. And so, if anything, like yeah, isolationism, yeah. being isolated. Um, I guess for me, like Baltimore is the first city that I've lived in. Like I grew up right around like the Silver Spring area, like, Montgomery County, um, and like I love Baltimore. Like I don't like. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, me and Dave talk about it sometimes, like, you know, it's like, ah, I like, you know, Portland's cool, and, like, Austin's cool, and some other places are cool, but, like, I really think Baltimore is, like, a very underrated city. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say underrated. Yeah, and respect to, like, because, again, I mean, obviously, like, people watch The Wire, and, right? like, yeah. outside, and, like, oh, you guys are just killing each other out there. Um, but, like, you know, they don't know about, like, one of my favorite things, it's, it doesn't happen anymore, because other kind of left. But like previously, when Otakon was here, like you would see people like coming in for like vacation or like business meetings, and they'd be going to their like hotels, and then there'd just be like a kid and like a Goku like <laughs> wig with like a sword like loading his yeah. thing into like a car, and they'd be like, "What? Uh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> um, Driving over harbor during Ronicon. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I mean, we're we're weird, and I like kind of like embrace that. Like I think yeah. Baltimore is also. Cause like, like pretty friendly here. Like I don't know. Like, a lot of people have like, you know, yeah. misconceptions. <laughs> well, I mean, like, to an extent. I mean, like like any city. Like people yeah. are like, it's not like uh, yeah. you know, uh, people are, like, dancing in the street. But like, you know, I think. Well, but it you know, could be. Right, but I th I think. Put <laughs> hard work in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wasn't it like I do want some dancing. The first step of movie was in Baltimore, right? Yeah. So like technically. Yeah. There you but, go. <laughs> like some of my favorite creators are from Glasgow, uh, Scotland, and like they like put that place on the map for like cool creators. Yeah. And like I've said to so many other, so many of us, yeah. I, I was just was like, I really want to put Baltimore on the map as like a solid place for comics, mm -hmm. just, just comics, like just art too. But art, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I like well, comics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so so well. Dave, you both of you are kind of saying something that I think speaks to me. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a relatively recent transplant uh, to Baltimore, and I grew up out in Colorado where it's wide open spaces and, and not many people really talk to each other. They all head up to the mountains on the weekend. And, um, or the, now they're just going to pop, but that was, that was after I left. Uh, and um, uh, one of the things I thought about Baltimore, you know, Jordan, you said friendly. I, I think a well, word that comes to my mind in addition to friendly is accessible. Um, Baltimore, you know, the, the first month we were here, my wife auditioned for a Baltimore Rock Opera Society show. And like that was such an instant community. And they were warm-hearted and loving and they were doing such intense and amazing art that like just we knew we had found a network and a family and a cool thing to do and something that I had never seen anywhere else. Um, and and I felt similarly when I first hooked up with people. You know, it was like the, these people are they're gonna talk to me, like they're, they're, they're talking to me. <laughs> like, and, it's, and it's great, I think, I think it's something, I don't know if it's unique, but it's something that I haven't seen anywhere other than Baltimore. Well, I was gonna say, you know, um, Smaltimore is one of the affectionate nicknames of the city, and Charm City, it is charming. The city that reads. The city that reads, um, the yeah, the greatest city, city in America, in America <laughs> is on our benches, so it must be true if it's on a bench, right? But yeah, just, yeah, I also grew up in Silver Spring, um, yeah, and I lived in Silver Spring for a while after um, graduating and just didn't really know the people in my neighborhood yeah, even. No. And then when I moved to Baltimore, like, I'm still friends with the neighbors on the street that we've all since moved off this street, but we still get together and we have brunch once a month. Like, I just, even that kind of community within mm -hmm. Baltimore, like, yeah, just friendly people. Yeah. And looking beyond Baltimore and Baltimore, you know, I think um, we've talked a little bit about a couple of different groups in other places, uh, and I think seeing the way community, and especially geographic community, 
Um, it, with uh, the DC Conspiracy and Square City Comics are both really focused on sort of geographic sense of place and it's, it's absolutely influencing their art. You know, Square City Comics is starting up a, a superhero otherworldly anthology that's set in a fictionalized version of DC. And DC Conspiracy does redistricted comics, which is a, an ongoing series of historical uh, comics specifically about the history of, of the district. And so um, I think, yeah, I think that is one of the benefits of getting together with people in person, right? You can talk about the things you have in common outside of comics, you know, even if that's just, oh, yeah, you go to the same bar, like, let's, and, and you can start to form connections because you have them in common on, on that entire network. Um, we gotta, I, I think we've had time to talk about one more thing before I do want to open it up uh, wide up for questions. Um, and, and that's what's next. So I know I've had different conversations with all three of you about kind of what we see for, for Be More in the future, what we hope we can do as a community. Um, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Kat, can you start? Well, I started to say before that um, we've been talking about this for a while, and I hope that it's going to become reality for 2018, um, putting together a zine anthology type um, that features writers, artists, you know, people from our Be More group um, can submit things. Um, hopefully on a theme, and that can be something that we can put out and, um, you know, have for people to check out. Um, this, we're getting ready to schedule shows for our 2018 year two, because our, our last Be More show for 2017 is December 16th. Um, so getting ready to gear up for 2018, hoping to branch out to a couple new locations too, because Wind Up is like our home base, but it'd be great to go to a couple different uh, spots because we, we did do more spots in the beginning and then wind up kind of just became like our default. So more locations, maybe even a couple more dates because we have started to add more dates throughout the year too. Um, and fun crossover events like our, our Drinking and Dragons and Drink and Draw, you know, crossover thing, you know, trying to find other uh, like-minded groups to do things with, do um, fun stuff, and um, also just being involved with Baltimore Comic Con this year. This is the first time we've had a chance to do a panel, so thanks to Parker for organizing that and allowing us to, you know, all be up here talking about the community. So, you know, it really does take a village, you know, everybody brings something to it. So even though, you know, Be More's been going on for a couple of years, this is the first year we're here talking to you about it at Comic Con. So, yeah, hopefully more big things ahead. Yeah. Uh, marketing. Yeah. I'd like to market better. Yeah. yeah. I'd yeah. like to get in all the comic shops. I'd like all the comic shops in the probably tri-state area to know who we are, where we are, why we are. Mm -hmm. And then I would also like to have the numbers, just the numbers going on. <laughs> you know? and I, again, that goes with marketing. And of course, yeah, I would love to have a zine. We've talked countless times about having a zine and having short stories. Um, having quarterly and yearly things, and uh, yeah, um, ditto, ditto anthology zine. <laughs> I'd like to have them. Um, I've been talking to, I was talking to some of the Square City people, and they were talking about maybe even like a one for one situation where like we bring Square City up and kind of like host them as yeah, an event, yeah, and then yeah. they bring us down to DC and kind of yeah. like show us off. Yes, yeah, uh, the yeah. Area. that's good. Um, that's good. I like to do some outreach, you know, just in general of us like getting out the community and doing like workshops and stuff uh, where we kind of, you know, bring people in and we can do like, you know, comics classes. Um, we can kind of talk to people about, you know, certain things like maybe doing a Kickstarter or doing like, um, you know, some other things that, you know, when you're just trying to get started in comics, you might have questions about. Um, I like to get us out into maybe one of the street festivals in Baltimore, and maybe not Artscape because that's super hot, but like, <laughs> like a s <laughs> smaller, like one day kind of show. Because um, you know, part of what Be More is about is bringing comics to people where they don't usually expect to see comics. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I think there's there's different spaces. You know, people at the Poe House have talked to us about coming out and doing mm -hmm. stuff there. Um, so libraries too. Libraries as well. Yeah, we um, did one. So hopefully yeah, that would be cool. And like Dave was talking about, I mean, just fostering more relationships with, uh, you know, comics people within the community, getting a into, presence. Yeah, comic shops and kind of uh, 
we've been doing some signings like last year. Yeah, we do. We do a couple of signings. So like having us like out like in mass, um, just in places, uh, and getting like work in stores. You know, like be more work uh, would be cool. We're talking about shelf talkers and even little like pop-up displays, like be more into comics pop-up displays yeah. where we can all have a facing of our work and yeah, display it here in your store or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, and of course, yeah, more presences at comic shows. Yeah. Also, I want to get into advertising each other in each other's comics. Like I want to try to do with uh, whichever my next Kickstarter, if I do another Kickstarter, we're going to do it. Can you stop? Is it possible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I want to. I want to start getting like, you know, quarter page ads or or uh, half page ads, page ads, and like, you know, just pad some of the books with each other's work so that everyone knows like, who you are, where we are, or maybe just get like a one page thing that's just like be more into comics, and then just like, you know, URLs or. Uh, Twitter handles or whatever, yeah. you know, like just again more presence, yeah. mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, we're at Baltimore Comic Con now, and we're being more into comics and like yeah. we're the comic part, you know. Uh, I think two more things, like hugs, hugs. more hugs. kisses, more kisses, <laughs> <laughs> more love. Um, I like to do. I think it'd be more like just a podcast or something like that would be cool, mm -hmm. just to kind of have you know something where we can kind of. Well, you've had yeah, a couple um, people on your podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, we could do that. And then, like, uh, hopefully at this next show, but coming up next year, we did a panel where we ate, like, really hot wings. Mm -hmm. You guys like, have seen uh, hot ones. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We did, we did one of those. It was, um, the, it was the three of us and, yeah. and John and, and Phil, right? Yeah. yeah. So, we need hotter, hotter wings. <laughs> hotter <laughs> wings 2018. Yeah, hotter <laughs> wings 2018. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, one, I think one of the best things about Be More is that it is so accessible. Even as we're talking about doing more and more professional stuff, it has been super accessible, um, especially to me because I, I knew nothing when I first started showing up. So creative communities, what, what can Be More do for you? How can we help you get connected to other folks that can help you do your thing? Yeah. So I, I love the Be More shows and I, drive all the way down from Philly for them every time and you guys have been like uh, just so welcoming and I'm jealous because I want to have that sort of community and form that community in the Philly area. Well, yes, well, sure. right. Already making that. So yes, and, so yeah, there you go. Well, I was wondering if you could talk about a little bit about how to really get that sort of thing, the ball rolling. Have you talked to the Locust Moon guys? I have not. They had they, a show, though. but they then publish. it like. Yeah, no, but they, they published still. They were yeah. at SBX. <laughs> yeah, but they 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 closed their shop. Yeah. They closed yeah. their thing, and um, I'm in more like suburban Philly, which is yeah. it's what kind of a it's yeah. a little hype. Well, I'm in Phoenixville. Oh, okay. I'm there. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, so, so if I'm right, the core of the question is like, what, what are like some principles? Yeah, like, like some yeah. ways of getting the ball rolling. Well, I know, you know, I mentioned this in passing. I think one of the most important uh, things for getting me involved was that it was accessible right? and that it was it was non-judgmental. Um, that I was able to walk in and say, hey, you know, I've written some short stories. I'm curious about comics. What what do I need to do? And and I got helpful and lovely advice from people with years in the game like like Monica and Danielle Corsetto and Kata um, just showing me the ropes. So I think being being wide open has helped me slide into being more uh Kata what, what principles do you think are I mean I was just gonna say um, even before I did the the first Be More show that I ever did, which was the second show, um, I kind of knew some of those people just from doing conventions. So like right here, we've got two people who are from Philly, who you guys are in the same room right now. So, you know, going forward, you know, if you've done a couple conventions before or you have a couple people that, you know, are already within your network, 
invite them, you know, see if they can come and help fill out and help spread the word and, you know, network that way with the people that you may already have connections with, which I know that's difficult if you're like, I'm here because I need to make some connections. Um, but hopefully, you know, we're all in this room and, and connections are getting made, so. Yeah, actually, can I tag on that? Yeah. So, so one thing I found with my Drinking and Dragons work is that it's easy to put something up on Facebook and it's helpful, like on Facebook or on Twitter or on the bar's website, we put out an advertisement, it's like, hey, we're doing this thing. But that is much less successful at getting people integrated than Surprise. looking one person in the eye and saying, <laughs> you should come to this thing, please. And look at them and don't break eye contact. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, just stare into them. Like, so, yeah. Yeah. This sort of thing? It's time. Yeah. <laughs> it's time. It's time. time. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would also say, I mean, we talked about this a little bit as kids, but yeah. like, like start small, I guess is kind of like what you know, Kevin Parker was saying. Because like I think a lot of times people want to do things and they're like, I'm gonna do this thing. Oh uh, yeah. And then you it's know they have all these, yeah, like all these, Yeah, and it's like you know, this yeah. Is hard. Yeah, I mean, Kevin can tell you that Be More didn't start with all of these people. Definitely, you know, yeah. She started yeah. with Monica and you know, a few people that she knew, and she kind of like built it up over time. So mm -hmm. I think uh, you know, like friends. Right now, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of got this going on. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you know other people, you know that that are somewhat in the area, get in contact with them. I think it's good to, you know, build up connections with uh, places that maybe could could like house you. I mean, even if it's like you know, we go to wind up. I don't know if there's a bar in your area or close by that would be a good spot. If there's a comic shop in your area, that would be a good spot. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I've been talking to Uncanny and King Crusher, cool. mm -hmm. but they're. Yeah, they're moving. Yeah. They're moving See, locations, so okay. it's like after the move. When they, when they had that Locust Moon Comic Fest, like at that church, yeah. you guys the been Rotunda. There? Yeah, right. I, I actually I had a table at that. Was, yeah, like, I did. Show. Like Mike Riley and I had like. Oh, okay. It was one one of those years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then like the year after, I wasn't there, and then yeah, they it. don't do it anymore. Yeah, I, I was the, the second year after. I did the second to last okay. year. Yeah, I wasn't at the and last. And I did one. the last. Yeah. So I mean, can you guys get in touch with the people that run that place, like that own that place, yeah. and like maybe try to figure out logistics as far as that part? You know, like how much is it going to be to rent this for a day, and like how many hours, and then it's like okay, from there, then you decide like how much would a table be, yeah. and then from there you start contacting. Maybe I don't know if you can get in touch with the people at Locust Moon. But like, hey, do you guys have a mailing list for like creators or artists? Or go back to shows previous and look at the attendance list and, yeah. and the attendees and just be like, oh wait, I like I know this person, this person, this person, this person. It's like, hey, I'm trying to get this show back together, or not necessarily this show back together, but a show back together. And I would really like to see if you guys would help me out with either being into it or like help foster it in some sort of way. And I mean. I think that's pretty much what we would do or what happened. And then, of course, yeah, like local comic shops, like if you go to a, have a local shop that you guys go to, definitely. Like free comic book day. Free comic book day, for sure. Mm -hmm. Flyers. Um, Halloween Comic Fest yeah. is coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's, a, there's an event right there. So I would say look into your local area for Halloween Comic Fest and see if there's any attendees going. And then just like show up and be like, hey, look, I'm this dude. And I think I want to do this soon. Yeah. Can I, yeah, I was going to say for Free Comic Book Day, that's a good one because, um, like, Collector's Corner, like, they reached out to me and they were like, hey, you're a local person, come here yeah. and, you know, just do some free sketches for kids, but you can sell all your stuff, too. So. Yeah, that's all we did. No, yeah. that's all we do now is just mm -hmm. get local people. Yeah. So we're talking a lot about, like, uh, specifically conventions and, like, getting conventions started, but I think, you know, as much as I love the conventions, I think Drinking Girl is almost more valuable part of, of be more to me and it's I, I think um, yeah so I think starting small and starting sustainable right because if you can build a core group of people even if it's just getting together once a month to talk about what you're doing that's how you build connections and then bigger things can grow out of that you know we can't you know three years ago I mean I mean Melody put the zine together but I don't know if anyone else could have really talked about a Baltimore zine and now we're talking about doing something regular you know so it's I mean, starting small and starting sustainable and scalable can be important. Yeah, do you guys have a wind-up, like a wind-up space? Not. Or like an art space? Uh, Amalgam, yeah. Amalgam. Amalgam. Yeah. 
Yeah. Amalgam, yeah. That's what I'm asking people there. Some yeah, the and I, I, I know Randy who works there, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this, works, this works outside of Philly, too. There so it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, so what other, what other questions or, what, or, or statements? Tell us, what can, what can communities do for you? What can people do for you? Yeah. yeah. Um, not quite related, maybe. Um, um, I have a question about Kickstarters. Like, how do you promote your Kickstarter? I mean, you have six successful Kickstarters? It's the worst. It's going to be everybody. It is the worst. But I want to know, like, what other stuff do you do? I mean, I did, okay, so I did flyers, like I made a four sheet and then just, and just made like essentially like punk rock flyers with your URL and like those QR codes, right? Um, and then I took that to comic shops around town. I took it to do more shows and these are just like multiple different Kickstarters, like oh, we got another one, great, right? <laughs> um, of course, like. If you're doing a Kickstarter for a comic, like you can always have like your assigning party, and I'm like, you know, that I have very, I have helpful people in the community that will like assist me with that, like my local comic shop, a local coffee shop, the wine up space, a be more event, something like that will always like kind of facilitate that and help. Um, and of course, like knowing people and if they're willing to share and like and back your stuff, of course, is always helpful. And like, and basically what, at the end of the day, it's your friends and family that are gonna be chipping in that last, like, probably grand. Mm -hmm. mm, yes, it's yeah. delicious. Um, yeah. So, like, you know, the other thing about Kickstarter is that there's a little, there's a funny spot that's happening right now because I wanna say, I don't want to know, I don't know what the actual numbers are, but I want to say there's probably a good amount, like, we're probably going to look at, like, 60% of Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarters don't, like, send the product out, don't, don't, like, you know, uh, fulfill, yeah. right? And so, sadly, people like yourself and, and me will be lumped into that category where it's like, well, who are you? And... Are you going to give me my stuff if I give you my money? Yeah. And chances are, you know, you will and I will. And that's one of the things that you kind of got going for you. But at the same time, if you don't have a name or someone within the comics community, comics professionals, like, giving you a little, like, what's, what's, the, what's the one sentence? Like a pull quote? A pull quote. A pull no. quote. No. If you're not getting a pull quote from somebody or a couple pull quotes or a couple big name people yeah. like tweeting things out or sharing your things, like, right. it's going to be slow going. But even, for example, Mike Riley got Neil Gaiman to retweet his thing. Yeah. And that got him like a little something. It got him like a 15% bump, but right? Like not what you would expect right. to get. Yeah. Um, I would say that just relating all this back to community, like Dave recently with his Tap Sturgeon thing, I mean, you know, he just knows a lot of people in the area, so he was able to get uh, one of our friends, Mike Riley, to, to do you know some pent up stuff for him. Another one of our friends, Justin Jones, to do some pent up stuff for him. Uh, Parker, you got some people to do some stuff for your Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, I had a couple of stretch goals and some pent ups, uh -huh. and, and you know I have one, so like yeah. take everything I say with a much smaller grain of salt than Dave's. Um, but uh, one thing I found in what I was talking about earlier with the drinking and dragon stuff is broadcasting is great. Broadcasting is important. Getting that background radiation yeah. out into people's like noise. But then specifically asking people is <laughs> like going to somebody and saying, hey, like I know you're gonna buy the book off me later. No. Just buy it off me now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Contribute to the Kickstarter and it's gonna happen. Sometimes you have to go direct. You have to. Yeah. Exactly. And I have a problem exactly. with some of this too. Like sometimes I'm just like, that's a wide net. No. Yeah. Like it's all about direct like Hey, if you didn't know, here's this. Hey, if you didn't know, here's this. Hey, you know, and it's like, I know it's brutal, but it's like something you got to do, especially yeah. if you want it to succeed, because you know what's going to end up happening is that after you do succeed, and it is you either channeling money through your friend to yeah. put it into your thing that you then get back, you know, you're going to you're going to get the book out, and then somebody's going to be like, oh, did you have a Kickstarter for it? And you're going to be like, yeah, for the past yeah. month, where were you? I saw you posting like cats and dogs and you <laughs> arguing with your aunt about something, but like you didn't see my Kickstarter. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're running a little short on time. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're good. Okay, well then, yeah, let's. Uh, Kickstarters are hard. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, God, so, uh, <laughs> Start small. Go big. Sustainability. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> uh, 
yeah, other questions? Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the one of the cool things about the internet is that it's kind of changed the way that you can put out your product. Like, um, Canada basically gives her product away mm -hmm. on her website, and then people still buy it in book form, and that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I imagine part of that is the community on the audience side that Kyle has built, where they say, hey, this is something great. We want to support you and get you to keep doing it. Um, have you guys had any successes in that, either using Patreon or just by having it out there and people can, can already experience it? And, um, you know, just to reference what you're saying with Alter Girl, I didn't do my first Kickstarter right out of the gate. I did put the comic out there and um, for, uh, it was almost three years, I think it was like two and a half years, until I did that um, first Kickstarter. And I also, um, you know, tried to make it a little special so it was something a little new. But yeah, if, if I hadn't built that community, um, I don't think the Kickstarter would have been as successful. So it is, it is good, like, I'm just echoing what we've kind of already been saying, just to start small. You know, if you're just starting out, don't, like, run out of the gate thinking, like, I'm going to have success after success, and I'm going to do this big, expansive thing, and if it fails, then I'm a failure. That's not how it works. You just build up to it and, you know, have patience. And I think that's one of the magic things about Patreon, especially. I, I'm using Patreon right now, um, and uh, one of the great things about Patreon is, it's ongoing and people only pay you when you make the stuff, right? So it avoids a couple of the problems of Kickstarter. It's not a specific period of time that people can miss. And uh, it's impossible for you to not deliver. Like, if you don't deliver, they don't pay you. And so, um, and so one of the best pieces of advice, you know, is a really long story that boils down to start a Patreon early. Because if you start a Patreon early, somebody out there is going to give you money. And every week, every month that they give you money, that's money that you didn't have. So like, e even if even if it's not covering your costs yet, it's if you don't have a Patreon, that's money you're leaving on the table. Um, even if it's five bucks a month, all right. Well, that's you know that's a cup of coffee while you're working on your script, you know. Um, and uh, and so that's been valuable for me uh, as as I've been working Patreon. And, um, and Patreon can also be a, a tool to build that community sometimes because you know I throw my comic up on the website and. and I get no comments on the website. You know, I, like, I don't have a community on the pages themselves. But people who join my Patreon, they are literally invested in my success, and I get way more engagement on my Patreon posts and on things I publicize through my Patreon than I do on things I just throw up on the website. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's our duty to continue to plug Monica while she's not around. She does a lot of stuff on her Patreon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, she does a lot of stuff online, too. She has the... Uh, Roommate Assassin, that she yeah. just launched on Assassin. Assassin, Assassin, Assassin Roommate, Roommate, it's online webtoon. Yeah, yeah it's online yeah. webtoon, and now she's got... <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's got, uh, you know, a, 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 I mean, how many other webcomics does she have? She does... Um, Bonnie and Kalai. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know that that one's been updating, but yeah. she is doing, here, yeah. um, she she's is good. doing stuff on her Patreon um, that are autobio comics, kind of, um, documenting what she's currently going through, um, you know, going through chemo right now. So she's still, you know, in a position where it's like, by all means, take a break, it, like rest and relax and recuperate, do what you need to do. But she's still putting out comics, talking about what she's going through, because even if it reaches one person, like that's a community too. Yeah. You've, you've reached even one person who can like relate to that is like mind blowing for a creator and reader too, I yeah. think. So yeah. yeah. And she's I mean again, she's got a really strong online presence mm -hmm. and I think that, that helps mm -hmm. her be able to, to continue to do that Patreon mm -hmm. um, and do a bunch of other things. She's still doing commissions, you know what I mean? She's mm -hmm. still <laughs> she's yeah. still out there working. So I think, you know, once you have kind of built up that foundation um, for all that stuff, you know, Patreon is, is like just extra like Parker was saying, it's almost free money at that point which you kinda of got people who, are, who know that you do quality work and know that you're gonna deliver that work on time, every time, uh, you know, I, I feel like people are like, yeah, you know, you, you'd be surprised, you know, because uh, different level, but Brian K. Vaughn, you know, started his, uh, um, what is that called? Animal Syndicate. Animal Syndicate, and it was basically like, 
I'll make comics for free, you know what I mean? Like he puts the comics up there and it's a pay what you want scale. And you would think, oh, like, I could get a Brian K. Fox comic for no money? Like, I'll do that, you know? But people like give him hundreds of dollars, you know what I mean, when they don't have to. Um, so I think once you've proven that you know, the work that you're gonna put out there is, is worth people's money, people will give you money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, we're a few minutes over, um, but as you can tell, we love talking about this stuff, whether it's uh, conversations about our specific strategies, or about Be More, or if we can hook you up with other folks in Philly, or uh, the folks we know in DC, and a couple of folks uh, you know across the country. Um, find us down on the floor. We've, we've got a couple hours left. Come, uh, make a connection, and if you're local, come out to a drinking job. Uh, so I just want to real quick, um, where we can all be found. Dave, are you on the floor, or should you hang out at our table for a while? I'm hovering. I'm, uh, I'm hovering around. I'm at 121. Raver Roberts also is part of the community. Who's also part of the community? Um, I'll be there. I'm there with Mike Riley, and I've got I've got some books there, and he's got some books there. 121. Yeah. So, and that's and that is not that is not a 121. That is 121. That is 121. Raver Roberts, straight yeah. up Raver <laughs> Roberts, man of God. Uh, Very literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me, me and Parker are at the same table, uh, A287, uh, so you can, you can find us there. What? We're like near the back. Where? A287. A287. Yeah. Okay. And I'm actually in the same row, I'm just in the Kids Love Comics section, so my table number is 3002. But um, It's really weird on the back. Yeah, so just look for the Kids Love Comics section on table 2 in yeah. there. Um, but we're actually in the same row, so if you go to uh, Jordan and Parker's table, just stay in that row, you'll find my table too. Or vice versa. Or right, so please, come, come talk to us, come chat us up, talk about what Be More can do for you and, and how you can you know, support the community, and how we can help you see communities or connect you with communities we already know exist. Awesome. Thanks. Hey, what's up, can I? Jet Blue.